Y'all give it up for Eric Robeson. always an important part for house music. It's a little part here. Of course, I wasn't recording that, so let's do it now. Here we go. How many of you 
ever dealt with somebody you shouldn't have been dealing with? Why'd you look at her? He like turned his. What was that? Like, I mean, first of all, she's sitting like high and you're sitting low, which makes it a very awkward situation. But when I asked the question, he shifted his. But uh, you can start that one. You can start that one. And, um, but if you are in that situation, I want to dedicate it to this guy right here who. <laughs> What's your name, man? What's your name? Howard. I went to Howard, so, you know. Yes, yes. You went to Howard as well? Your name is Howard. She went to Howard. Are you guys together, though? Are you guys? Mm, yeah. I understand. Should have been dealing. Okay. It's okay. It's cool. It's cool. It's only on tape. It's only on tape. Are, 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 you, are you single? Wow. Howard. Howard, you thinking, you know, if I bring her but sit on another level, I might could get away with this. Just... What about you? What's your name, sweetheart? What's your name? Karen, or Karen are you single? Okay, so Karen is single. Howard is. <laughs> okay, all right. Howard and Karen. <laughs> there are no accidents. There are no accidents. Um, I want to dedicate this song to Howard and Carol. Karen, Karen or Carol? Karen. My goal is by the end of this song, Howard is licking Karen's face. That's my goal. I do with these feelings longing to have you need Karen no when we shouldn't be dealing yeah. why must the bad things always feel so Can I just stay away? Though our situation was understood, still does not mean it's okay. No. Where do we go from here, baby? What must I do? These feelings, longing to have you near. No, when we shouldn't be dealing. Why can't these memories just be erased? Why must I yearn? Face reminds me how much you miss. Where do we go? Yeah, 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 baby. Oh, what must I do with these feelings? Oh, no, no, no. Did you sing this part? 
impatient, maybe one day it will change. I wake up in the morning and it will not be the same. But every day we get up and we play the same old game. The pain remains the same. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to do something special. I want to do something special. We're live on air, and we have a lot of companies here, and, um, and I want to do something special. I want to write a song, if possible, right this very second, on the spot, me and my good friend Ian, but I want to include you guys as well. And see, this is how this is how special this is going to be. Check this out: the song is going to be such a hit that American Express is going to pay for it, and they're going to put it on a commercial. We're going to make a ton of money, and I'm going to share the proceeds with everyone in the room because I'm a fair kind of guy. All right, but there's a simple thing, it's a simple rule you need to follow. I need subjects, words, thoughts, whatever's from the crowd. I need whatever, but before you yell something out. Let the word you yell out be a fun word. Do not give me a boring, we're trying to impress American Express here. Do not give me a boring, whack, simple word. Don't give me love or peace or faith or intimacy or anything like that. I need good words like, like toenail clippings or something like that. The better the song, the better our chances that American Express will pay for this. If you decide to still give me a simple word, trust me, I have a cordless microphone right now. I will turn on the turn the cameras off. And I will throw this mic <laughs> as hard and as accurate as I can into your chest cavity. Okay? Or any words, any words, any. You said lilacs? Lilacs. Lilacs is, a, is that a flower? It's not, it's a flower. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Imagine what's on your mind. Lilacs. What color is a lilac? Just so I know. It's purple. Thank you very much. What'd you say over here? What, what did he say? I just need, I'm not gonna use it. I just need to know what he said. Excellent. Look at you. Thank you. Is that why you're bent over? Okay, I got you. I got you. It's cool. He's like, ugh. In fact, Jody. You're disqualified. Anything over here? Anything over here? Brazil, I love it, I love it. I'll tell you a quick story. My wife went to Brazil, uh, my wife went to Wharton and they did a, a school trip and she came back and I, I was at the airport to greet her, like happy. And as soon as she got off the plane, the first thing she said to me was, you're never going there. So <laughs> that's, a, that's a true story, it's a true story. So I'm gonna sing this song in honor of my absence from Brazil. Anything else, anything else? Uh, Good, thank you. Cha-ching, we're gonna get that money. <laughs> What's that? Roller coaster, okay, I think we're good. I, are we good? I think we're good. Listen, I'm gonna write this down. And I usually remember this, but I'm gonna write it down because I need you guys to remember it. So we have roller coaster. I'm just writing roller because we don't have time. Uh, what was the other ones? I, look, I forgot that fast. Google. Lilac. How do you, how do you spell lilac? What is that? I don't, I never smell. Oh, uh, Lord. I just did one young lady with the chain. What's that? You want your spell to be. Oh, plural. You want to do lilacs. Okay, got you. Got you. <laughs> got you. And, and Brazil. And Brazil. Okay. Are you ready for the song? Okay. Okay, so we have. What, what was your word, though, Jody? I'm going to take your word. What was your word? Is it investment? All right. All right. 
It's all corporate. What is that? <laughs> Investment. <laughs> we are in a room full of lawyers and entrepreneurs. CDs are only ten dollars. I mean, you can make the investment. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. I apologize. I apologize, Ryan, for my silliness. Um, someone slipped something in my tea, I think. Uh, okay, so we have. I could have wrote roller coaster. We have roller coaster, Google, lilacs, the plural, <laughs> Brazil, and investment. Camera, where's the camera at? I just want to make sure that they see this. Okay, all right, so, uh, <clears throat> and Ian's gonna create the music right now on the spot as well, so he's gonna get some publishing as well. So uh, you, can, you can start it, whatever you feel. If you want, I'll throw even a beat to it as well, so we'll, but you'll, we'll let you start first. Throw your X-Lax in. I might do it. I might do it. I might. Sofa. 
Won't you be with me for my ride through life's roller coaster? And she said yes. Softly laid down tears that dropped down on my chest. And I replied by putting my hand right on her thigh. Get your mind out the gutter. So, we thought about the wedding plans and everything and how we would have wine that was chilled. And we would walk and I would carry her through the house holding her up and we would have a honeymoon out in Brazil. And I mean, she would walk down and the flower girl would be looking beautiful throwing purple lilacs. Until I found out that the price of the wedding put my American Express to the max. What I thought was heaven sent is turning to a bad investment. Now I'm looking at all my money has went. Seems like all of my money is really spent. Next time I'll find someone frugal. So I won't have to find out about bankruptcy in Google. Hopefully next time I'll find someone frugal. Maybe I'll find a dating site. Let me type it in on Google. Singleblackman.com. Singlewoman.com. That's murder that. Yeah, pause. What was that? <laughs> I turned to the wrong website. I think I'll not go back. Had a bald-headed guy in a Speedo and in his mouth was a lilac. So this moral of the story, before I am done, you need to really find who you invest in. It's not all about just fun. Because this young lady may take your heart and not give it back. And your heart will feel like you just took a whole bunch of x lives. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This song is on the new album, which is called Mr. Nice Guy. And you can start it, because I want, I want to talk a little bit while you, while you play this part. Um, but the song was inspired by my grandfather, amazing, wise man. And uh, he lived in North Carolina, and uh, in a little town called Stokes. And in that little town called Stokes, there was a little house. And in that little house was a man. That man was my grandfather. We would have these amazing talks in the front of the house. And one time he said, eh, I'm not into hugging in church. Now he was a pastor in a little, a little church down the street on a dirt road. And he said, eh, I'm not into hugging in church. sat up and said, wow. He said, because I'm a man. And if you touch me, I'm going to feel something. Now, now Lou Ray, that Lou Ray in that kitchen there, oh, I love Lou Ray. I love Lou Ray enough to understand I'm a man. So, eh, eh, sometimes it's just better to just shake a hand and walk away. Because it helps me. So I want to dedicate this song to that one particular woman in this room who thought she had a shot with me tonight. Apologize. Oh, I can hear somebody in the back going. Yeah. 
did say she was a big fan of my words And that dress she had on I was a fan of her curves Yes, she and I had a whole lot in common In most circumstances I'd be all in sugar but I got a new shorty and I really kind of dig her, yeah. Uh. So chilling with this girl don't fit in the picture now. Mm -hmm. But she want to know what I got going on later on. And would it be wrong if she tagged along? I thought to myself, I got a girl back at home. To just carry on, sugar. A wise man once told me, when you're tempted with this, shake her hand and just walk away. Yeah. I know it sounds crazy, but I just gotta do it though. She looking at me like, don't you think that I'm beautiful? <laughs> Understand I'm a man and your flyness is recognized. But before I start not thinking right, it's probably best I say goodnight. I guess she understood, though she didn't seem happy, no. Mm -mm. Huh. How often do guys look in her eyes and just tell her no? Well, maybe things would have been different a few months ago. Clothes would have just said Geronimo. You never know. You see, I got a girl back at home. I can't afford to just carry on, sugar. A wise man once told me when you're tempted.
don't it on by day Don't don't it on don't it on Don't don't it on by day Don't don't it on it on by da 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 She would sit and listen for hours as I play guitar oh Sing my songs up on the radio while she was in a car. She came to my shows, her interest would grow. She knew every note, lines that I wrote. Oh, 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 oh. Suddenly she fell in love. In town I met this lovely girl, was attracted by her way. What took years for some couples to build for us, it just took days. So as time went on, I wrote a more songs, I knowing that storm would soon come along. Leaving me in so much pain, but the show must go on. Unfortunately, I'm all alone up from my dream. Cause she couldn't hear me over the music. She couldn't hear me over the music. She couldn't hear me over the music. She never really knew my song. Don't don't it on by day. Don't don't it on body da da da. As time went on, she started to see I was not Superman. I may have a gift with these words, but I'm no more than a man. My song's about joy, my song's about pain. She loved them the same, but to me she changed. Oh, oh, oh. Holding on just got so hard. I would be up in the studio some night she slept alone. She get mad filled with jealousy, cause I'm making love to this bone. Now when I do shows, it seems she get steamed as if I had flings with those girls that scream out my name. When she used to just do the same But the show must go on Unfortunately I'm all alone Up from my dream Cause she couldn't hear me over the music She couldn't hear me over the music She couldn't hear me over the music She never really knew my song Couldn't hear me over the music Couldn't hear me over the music couldn't hear me over the music She never, 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 never knew my song Knew my song, no Knew my song, no, 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 no Knew my song, no, no, no Knew my song, no Knew my song, no Knew my song, no, 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 no Knew my song, no, 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 no to my crib and if she walks in she starts twirling her hair kicks off her shoes and says I like where you live and as we would chat 
about this and that I would pick up my guitar and strum and scat as she talked I would see it work mm, oh I like that song you sing oh to be music for you. Music can be your car. How big your rims are. Or how much money you God bless you. Once again, Ian McCauley. My name's Eric Roberson. Thank you very much. I appreciate everybody for all the love. We hanging out, so I hope to meet every one of you guys. Take care. Thank you. So, Eric, thanks so much for being here at Google today. Ryan, thank you very much. Second time. Yes. Is a charm, I I'm hear. I'm getting <laughs> more and more familiar with the stage, and I, yep. I, I handed in my application to Google, so I love the building so much. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, I'm just waiting for a call back. <laughs> you know, I knew I should have got rid of that iPhone. But that's another story. I'm, I'm getting an Android any second now. Cool. Hopefully. That'll probably put it over the top. <laughs> right. um, just kidding. But, yeah, I just wanted to talk. We're, we're celebrating Black History Month tonight, yes. and I'm so happy you're here hosting the event. Thank you. Um, are you, you know, I heard you were Mr. Black Teen Universe. Mr. Black Teenage World was actually world. the title, yes. So the whole world, not just the U.S., <laughs> so but everywhere. It was like one person from overseas and was like, we, we got it, we conquered the world, and, you know. But yeah, I was 16 years old, man, and my sister, uh, who I, I give a lot of credit for me even doing art in any form or fashion because she was so talented. She was in a lot of pageants oh, cool. that my mom and uh, father were putting her in. And my mom found a pageant that for for teenage boys. Cool. And uh, <laughs> I got up there and and uh, embarrassed myself and and won the state. And then I, I won the national. And it gave me a full scholarship to Howard University. So that was the great part that came out of it. Great. Also, as well. Yeah, I'm sure that couldn't have hurt your image of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, Mr. right. Mr. World. <laughs> Mr. Teenage World. <laughs> so, but can you, in, in seriousness, can you explain, like, how did that affect your trajectory from there? Like, was that a big moment, or was it just something you did? Or it was a huge moment. It was a huge moment. I think, one, I've always said that I was somehow going to go to college on a scholarship, whether it was playing football or doing something. Um, and at the same time, you know, going into my junior year, where at that point I was 
drawing and designing clothes, doing theater, making music, skateboarding, BMXing. I was just all over the place in everything I wanted to do. So to gain a scholarship by pretty much singing for the most part, I had to do other things in the, in the pageant, it, it really said, you know, Mom and Dad, I think I'm not going to be a political science major. I <laughs> think I'm going to try. Uh, you know, there wasn't an R&B major. Right. Yeah, you know, what I mean, it wasn't a. I can I major in being. I'll be sure. Just uh, you know, I can't. I couldn't do it. So I, I grew up doing theater. You know, yeah. so I said I went to as a musical theater major, man. And it was, you know, going to Howard, and it was one of the best decisions ever in my life. Yeah. yeah. Can you talk about Howard and the role of historically black colleges and universities, and well, you're and also what Black History Month means? means indeed, to. you're walking down hallways that Donny Hathaway hummed down. Yeah. You're going into practice rooms that Roberta Flack played in. You're standing on a stage reading a monologue that Felicia Rashad read a monologue on. You know, just the history of it. And I learned very early on to be very prepared um, because at any second, um, Q-Tip from A Tribe Called Quest or Bill Cosby or Muhammad Ali will walk down the hallway or across the yard. Um, but at the same time, my friends were getting signed you know, uh, if anybody remembers, and if I ever, the group shy, uh, fall in love song, we were friends. They were our buddies at Howard, and they handed their record to um, a, a DJ. And two weeks later, they're on Arsenio Hall. And, wow. and, and five months later, five weeks later, they had, you know, finished the album in a week, handed in the album, sold three million copies. And I handed them my demo and said, just hand it to somebody in L.A. And before you know it, I was flying there. And in my sophomore year, I got a record deal. Yeah. You know, and um, so it was just a, a very working environment. My One of my professors, um, the late, great, amazing Al Friedman, who played uh, Elijah Muhammad in the Malcolm X movie, was one of my teachers. Wow. So, you know, and he shot it while teaching. So it was like... You know, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm going to L.A. next week to try to meet with Warner Brothers for a record deal. Like, how can they be like, no, stay here and work on your studies when he's like, I'm going to meet with Spike. You know, it's like <laughs> you, you had to just it was just a working environment. Yeah. Marlon Wayans was a good friend of mine. He was doing movies and going to class at the same time. So I think I needed to see that. And it was the first lesson of learning how to balance everything. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's that's a lot going on at yeah. once, and I think uh, inspiring to, yeah, to see. Much. So thanks for sharing that. No problem. So can you talk about how, you know, you had the deal with Warner, and and what you were in my mind, you were kind of a trailblazer of independent music. Um, you know, people were doing it, but you've been able to do it and sustain it. Um, I, I think my career has um, been able to overshadow how many times I've been dropped from record labels, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or just how unsuccessful I was in, <laughs> in like, you know, getting a contract signed was one thing, but getting that album out is a whole nother tricky monster. And, um, and I remember, um, having a song on billboard and it's growing and being a class, a school in, in, in school. I remember telling my parents, like, I can't make it to class. Just, I got a video out and just all these people are, you know, grab me. I can't, I literally can't make it to class. I said, I, you know, I just got to, I can't do this. So I, I took off like two years and then the Warner Brothers situation didn't work out. I went to Ireland and the Ireland situation didn't work back. And, um, my mom was like, you're going to go back to that school and you are going to get your scholarship back. I was like, all right. I went in and I literally sang to everybody like, please give me my scholarship back. I'll get straight A's, I promise. And, uh, and, and, uh, and amazingly, I went back. And it was like, but it was crazy because I went back and it's like, oh, that's that kid that had that record deal. Like the whispers walking across mm. the yard like, oh, that's that kid that fell off. Didn't he? Was he there? That's when I had that video. That was a long time ago. I wonder if he still got money. Like it was like, oh, like you know. Wow. So like the humbleness of like, it made me a better student, a better singer, a more humble artist. Uh, you know, a more focused everything, every aspect. And I will tell you, if I had a, uh, if I had this huge record and just, you know, took off, I wouldn't be doing music right now. I wasn't talented enough at the time. I didn't know how to handle everything. Like so, I had to go back. And going back to school and graduating was like the hardest thing I've ever done in life. L it really was. Um, but it was it was a great decision. And and even with that, I went back to college and I started writing songs for other people. That I landed a song on 112, you know, and uh, there's a group called Fajr on Warner Brothers. So I was placing songs and still recording. 
And um, it just got to the point where, you know, for me, the deals weren't working out. And I had just too many songs that just meant too much for me. It all started with, a, I had a real bad breakup. And I just closed the studio doors and started recording. And those songs weren't, I wasn't going to give to somebody else. So that's how, you know, my independent career started. That's cool. Would you mind sharing a couple of the song titles that fall into that category? Yeah, there was a whole album called Esoteric. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's crazy because it was a healing record for me. So when an album came out and, you know, the songs like... Um, uh, what is what are some of the song titles? A uh, newborn child, which is saying I'll cry like a newborn child, which I was doing at the time. Uh, when the album came out, and I would meet you know women, they're like, "This record is so beautiful." And I'm like, "What do you mean? <laughs> this is about pain, you horrible person!" Like, <laughs> you know, like don't ever listen to my record. You don't understand. Um, but I had to realize that people could relate to what I was going through, and it helped. It helped me heal, but it helped them heal. Um, there was a, a song called Miles Away on there that was really uh, important. Um, and, and really the record, uh, esoteric means only meant to be understood by a chosen few. And that to me was my career. I wasn't trying to change the world. I wasn't trying to win everybody over. I was trying to just do music for someone who would feel this. Yeah. You know, because I always felt like my music career and my love life were parallel. They always have been, you know. And as a songwriter, I was doing great. I had songs for everybody and mother. I was writing all these songs. I was doing very, very well. But was I fulfilled with what I was doing? You know, I feel like I was a soul artist writing um, a lot of times, you know, compromising or just missing, as a fan, missing what was on the radio. So I said, all right, let me start doing what I feel like I'm missing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what I'm still doing to this day. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, as someone, I mean, I've, I'll be real with you. I've healed from your music, and that's uh, how I first got in, got into you at Past Paradise, Find a Way. Those uh, are some, those are songs that when you listen to, you're like, man, he's been through it. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. I'll, I'll Thanks. take <laughs> make checks payable to Eric Roberson, <laughs> whoever. You can just fill it out. Out. My father's back to he'll just accept the checks and payments. <laughs> um, you know, but it, it, it's and and I tell I tell you, um, um, I, I hope I, I said this respectfully. I got a text earlier, and I, I could show you for whoever doesn't believe me. He says, um, uh, a guy I was talking to who's in the industry, and he's struggling in, in his travels, and he says, man, you write great songs about passing up vaginas. <laughs> and I was like, what a great, horrible compliment. That was, like, amazingly <laughs> horrible, incredible at the same time. But, but you know, for me, I, I realized a long time ago, what I will tell you is that the lyrics come, and I, I can't take credit for them. They come, and then I learn what they mean, and then I try to be good enough to follow them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's been my whole career. So it's like I write a song and go, wow, this sounds pretty good. Mm. And then the lyrics are stable, and and then I I learn what that song meant for me. You know, I meant uh, Find the Way was important because it was... <clears throat> if anyone listens to Find the Way, it's a song of mine, and, and, and one vo it's like I sang it two parts, one high note and one low note. And I panned the high one all the way to the right, and I panned the low one all the way to the left. And the high one meant to be emotion, and the low note meant to be reality. And as, as a man, I was battling that. Like, sometimes we meet a young lady, and we're so used to our routine, she could be the soulmate, but I got that game, I gotta put that game on her, that I'm just ruining. Like, can I stop the game for two seconds just to see who she is? You know, and and... I've been lucky enough to write about it, uh, you know, or, or my breakups. What I made a decision a long time ago when I went back to Howard that every subject that came to mind or everything I went through, I'll put to music. So every argument, every great day, every whatever would be put to music. And I lost a lot of girlfriends that way, you know. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it came with the good and bad. I mean, you wrote that for me? You wrote that about me? It was like, it was the same thing. It was like it literally 24 <laughs> hours apart, you know. Um, you know, so just, but it's something I decided to do, man. And, and if, if God allowed me to have certain thoughts and lyrics and, and melodies, how dare I not use them? Yeah, no, that's incredible. So what's your process? Do you just wake up with, with something in your head or does it vary? Because I know sometimes, you know, people will say, oh, I woke up in the middle of the night. Sometimes I actually sat down. Does it change? or how to... It changes. Yeah. It's, I'm a fisherman of creativity. So I'm just, I, I'm, un, I'm under the belief that the idea, are, it, it already exists. I just have to find it and make it tangible. Yeah. So uh, 
a lot of my records are written in the bathroom. I'll leave it up to you to think what's happening in the bathroom <laughs> when I'm when I'm writing them. But every aspect from shaving to showering Coming. to other S words that fit. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Situate, soaping up, situating. you know, situating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, they, they, you know, but uh, it's funny because before I was very much uh, a slave to creativity. I was very much like, if an idea came and I was at the Thanksgiving table with my family I haven't seen all week, I would get up right then and go in the studio. You know, I was like very much like, I have an idea and I, everyone must respect the idea. You know, it was like, now I like, I believe that it's gonna come back now. So, yeah. you know, now having kids and, and having a wife and so like, I, I realized that it's a great idea, but I'm pushing my son on the swing and he's too young to be left here. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> let me, it'll come back. You know, and it's like, so, and it comes back. It comes yeah. back and, um, but I'm always writing, always. Like, my phone is full of lyrics and, and I'm always writing letters and, and just, I feel like you should just write in general to stay in shape for when the idea comes. Definitely. Yeah. You mentioned your kids. Just two more questions. One is, what's one thing you learned about yourself since you've become a father, which was two, uh, two years ago-ish? Yeah, I have a two-year-old and a seven-month-old and I'm not gonna cry. In front of all these people. <clears throat> the thing I learned about myself, um, man, uh, I, I don't know. It's a lot I learned about my kids, but I learned that I can be a morning person. Yeah. Um, because <laughs> <laughs> I probably, for the last 20 years, have averaged waking up at 12 to 1 o'clock in the, in the afternoon. And, uh, and now my sons get up, you know, I'm 7.30, you know, 6.00 whatever in the morning uh but I, I learned it's another level of love man but I, you know I, I, it's it's tough because I, I have great parents who i knew the example of incredible love i have amazing nephews and nieces and i mean i was crazy over them so um i knew that it could exist where it wasn't just a more of an aha moment um but I, if anything i learned that you can balance it all yeah like you know I would tell everybody out there, like, it was a guy recently who uh, I was just working with who was a cameraman. And he was like, he travels a lot. And he, he just got married. He's like, my wife wants to have a kid, but man, I just I just travel too much, man. And I'm like, it's going to fit. It's going to make its way, man. Like, don't, don't hold off for that. If I knew, you know, I don't think we really waited. I didn't push it away. But now, my last two records I recorded with my, a lot of time my son was on my lap. Yeah. Either one of them, you know what I mean? Because I got to get this idea done. I want to spend time with him, and he wants to spend time with me. Let's go in the studio, that you know works. what I mean? And it just works. Yeah. It just works. And I look forward to, you know, having them on tour with me and, uh, you know, the first time they actually write a song or, you know, something like that. Yeah. I look forward to all that. So cool. um, I feel what I may learn is just that my dreams are coming true more and more. Excellent. That's yeah. wonderful. So speaking of the studio, what's... Uh, Last question, but what's coming up next for you? Um, I've heard ah. United Tenor is in the mix. And I'm not going to cry about this one either. <laughs> I have to say that first, because if I don't say it, I will cry. Uh, I started doing music because of three influences. And one was A Tribe Called Quest. Um, number two was Stevie Wonder. And another was uh, a group called Commission. It's a gospel group from Detroit called Commission. Thank you. And, and one of the founders of that group was a guy named Fred Hammond. Um, amazing vocalist, amazing writer, and not only just musically, but I remember as a as a kid hearing their music and going, whatever that is, I want to do that. And um, I've had chances of meeting Fred uh, Hammond for many years, and I passed up every time. And my staff and some friends surprised me with a meeting. Um, I'm in a restaurant, think I'm about to be interviewed by Tom Joyner. And in walks Fred Hammond. I'm like, I tried to run away, and I was like, oh, you got me, you got me, man, <laughs> man. And um, and just because I wanted to be able to tell him, man, like, yo, like my career means so much. I'm not gonna cry. Here we go. Ah, tough it up, tough it up. Um, because of you, you know what I'm saying? I have this career, and I did. I didn't know if I was where I needed to be at yet to really understand. I, I didn't want to just hear, oh, that's cool, man. Thanks a lot. <laughs> oh, we're gonna eat. Like, you know, I didn't want that to be blown over. And um, so we kept in touch, and, and a couple months ago, he said, um, hey, I want to get an idea, I want to form a new group, and I would love for you to uh, be a member of the group. And I was like, 
uh, okay, I mean, I'll, I'll play the piccolo on an album for free. I'll pay to do it, you know? And uh, it's not just me and him. It's uh, Dave Hollister from the group Black Street, an amazing solo artist who I'm a huge fan of Dave, and another amazing artist named Brian Courtney Wilson, uh, who I'm friends with already. I met him years ago, and we kept in touch. And we all went to Dallas, and over the last you know, month or so, we tripped, traveled back and forth, and we recorded an incredible album. And uh, so the group's called United Tenors, um, or UT. Uh, the album comes out March 26th. We had our first concert uh, last Saturday. We shot a music video and live performance for a crowd of DC, I mean, in Dallas. And we cried through the whole show. Like, all four of us are just literally, you know, it's, it's a dream come true, man. Like, really, in every aspect of in every aspect you think we, we we performed four songs and we played the rest of the record. So while we're singing we're crying, while we're playing the records for people we're crying. Someone said something amazing on stage. So we're crying. so we're literally when you see the video, we're all like this with just towels on our face through the whole performance. But it, but it's tears of joy, you know, yeah. and it's like um and we're probably not gonna stop crying anytime soon. Like it, I mean in all honesty, we're probably 10, 10, 20 shows in, we're <laughs> we're still gonna be just like <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just so appreciate this opportunity, you know. Uh, and it's a gospel album, man. You know, um, I, I pride myself on. I never hear the fact that I'm a Christian, and uh, and I feel that it's been a ministry in all of my music. Um, so it's really cool to 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 be doing a gospel album, and then with, with two of my heroes and a very good friend of mine as well. Yeah, that's incredible. Thanks, yeah. thanks for sharing that. Thank I'm, you. I mean, I, I'm, I'm really honored to have you all here today, too, to the point where I might cry with you. So. Hey, t- tears of joy. T- everybody, cool. everybody, <laughs> tears. So just pass right. the tissues out. So, right. Eric, thanks so much for being here. Ryan, Looking forward always to tonight. always a pleasure, man. Yeah, for sure. Always. All right. Thank you.